più tra i farfalloni amoroso, notte e giorno di torno girano, delle belle trovando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor, delle belle trovando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Hi everyone, it's Hetty again. As I said in my last video when I did the strufola, I was gonna make the wine cookies, so I decided I was gonna make them. And here is all the ingredients. Now, there's a little story that goes with this. When I first had wine cookies, it was my girlfriend Arlene's mother. She made the best wine cookies, and me and my girlfriend Lorraine, we used to love to eat them. And we'd go up there, she lived on the top floor of a five-story tenement, and we'd go up there and we'd eat them and sneak a little bit at a time and we'd eat them. And then after a lot of years when we got married, we asked her for the recipe. So Lorraine got the recipe from Arlene, and she gave it to me, and we each made it. But they didn't taste the same. There was something so different about it and it was hard as rocks. So I figured out what was wrong. And you know, some people hate to give recipes out. So she left something out of it. And I figured out what it was. This little item here, baking powder. <laughs> So that's like an episode of everybody yes, with Raymond. <laughs> well, she, yes, exactly. It was like an episode of Raymond. So anyway, I figured out it was baking powder. And over the years, I've made a little changes as I do with all recipes. Anyway, what I have here is three and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter cup of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, a cup of wine. Now it could be Marsala or it could be, um, what's the other wine? Like Muscatel. It could be Muscatel. Either one. Whatever wine you want. But I use Marsala. And then uh, a half a cup of oil. Now I'm making a half a recipe because a whole recipe has got seven cups of flour and I'd be rolling and frying forever and nobody ever eats them but me. And so I eat the wine cookies and I gain 10 pounds. <laughs> so let's get started. What you have to do is you gotta heat the wine and the oil together. Okay, so I'm heating up the half a cup of uh, oil and the cup of Marsala wine. I put a pinch of cinnamon in there just to heat up together. But you don't have to make it boil, just when it gets warm so that I can mix it with the uh, remaining ingredients. So let's see, it's getting there, it's all right. You don't have to make it boil. Okay, so the wine and the oil, I made it warm up on the stove. And what we're gonna do in the blender, we're gonna put the three and a half cups of flour, the teaspoon of baking powder, the quarter cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, the remaining cinnamon, I put a dash in there, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so we're gonna pulse it to make sure it all mixes together. And then I'm gonna pour in the wine and the uh, oil. coming together. When these are together, they're really dark brown, and when you fry them, I hate to say it, but they look like dog turd. But they're so delicious. <laughs> okay, it's getting there. It's coming together. Now you can see that comes together. And you can put it down on a floured board. Take it out. Aha. Uh -huh. And mix these together. Oh, the smell, the smell of the cinnamon. And then you're gonna dip it in the 
the honey, warm up the honey and dip it in. I'm gonna make this rest for a little bit. Made the dough, make sure it's all mixed together nicely. And I'm gonna leave it here on the board and let it rest. Okay, so I let the dough rest for about 20 minutes to a half hour. And I have the oil heating up with the thermometer. You wanna get the temperature to about 330 or so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll these out individually. And they smell mm, so cinnamony. Is that a word, cinnamony? Anyway, so um, that's not rolling very well. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna roll them out and cut them in about one inch pieces. This is where the work is. Putting it together is nothing. Cutting it up and getting it, um, you have to, well, I'll show you. I don't know what you call it, but I'll show you. Okay, so you get like one inch pieces. And then you're gonna have to roll them. And I usually do it on one of these. Uh, well, I'll do all of these, and then I'll come back when they're ready to when I'm ready to start frying. There we go, getting the hang of it. Like Gavadil, only fatter. There you go. Okay, instead of dropping them in one at a time, I like to lower them all in like this here. Makes it easier, less splashing. And you can see it's starting to bubble and they'll rise to the top. And they're gonna cook about six, seven minutes. Uh, and when they are ready and to come out, I'll show you. Okay, so this is the last batch that I've been frying, and uh, that's about the color you want. They get darker, and they get even darker after you put them in the honey. But you can see here, they're a deep brown. But it's not because they're burnt, it's because of the wine that's in there. Now, you could use whatever wine you want. I use Marsala. You could use uh, sherry if you want, uh, whatever, but, or Muscatel. But I like the Marsala. See that, see the color there? Okay, so I'm, I have the, the honey warming right here. And I'm gonna take this last batch out right now. I got the last of the Mohegans. So we're gonna let that cool off and I'm gonna put the honey here. So what you do is you let it get warm and it gets, it's not as thick when it's warm. And I'm gonna do like a half a batch at a time. So you put them in honey you actually if you could fit them all put them all there they go the only thing is it's hard to move them around when they're all in together but we'll see you want to try and get them all coated and here we go and when they're in the honey they get even darker okay so I've heated everything up I should have uh, did it in two batches because it made it a little harder to move the cookies around. But nevertheless, this is a half a batch. If you wanna do the whole batch, you're more than welcome. There's seven cups of flour, so you'll get two big dishes. This is enough for us, more than enough, because I wind up eating them myself. Anyway, so these are called tradilli, tradilli, whatever. Uh, I don't know what region of Italy they're from, but I love them. 
My sons, I don't think, are gonna go for it too much, but I don't know, it's tradition. And I'm using my one-armed bandit, my 50-year-old one-armed bandit, as you can see. <laughs> All right, you sprinkle a little jimmies on them. go this is the final product I love them Look, here you go Tordilli if you decide to make them I'm sure you're gonna love them too so again Merry Christmas on Sunday this coming Sunday which is a day before Christmas Eve I'm gonna try to make seafood salad and I don't know if I'll be videoing it or not but that's one of my all-time favorites I love it I make a lot of it so there's leftover and I have it for lunch every day so and all these recipes they're in my cookbook the link is below the video Buona Natale hope you have a wonderful Christmas Hello everyone, this is Hetty again. Oh. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> so, we're gonna pulse this so it mixes together. It would help if I plugged it in. Everybody into the, into the, what do you call it? <laughs> Whatever you call it. Maybe you could have done half there. What? Maybe you should have done half. I uh, maybe I should have. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. All right. Well, we'll come back when I'm finished getting all the honey <laughs> on there. <laughs> 